Good morning, everyone. And good morning to those of you joining us online. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be with you. Please share with one another God's peace. Well, hold on just a second. Peace be with you, Mr. Man. Wow. <laughs> Peace. That just made my morning. Our service today begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open all desires known and from you no secrets are hid cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your holy spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through christ our lord amen Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's holy word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the apostles had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? 
This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 68, verses 1 through 10 and verses 33 through 36, starting on page 676 and continuing on 673 in your book of common prayer or in your bulletin. We will read this psalm responsively. My side of, of the sanctuary will read the odd verses, the other side, the even verses. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. Let them vanish like smoke when the wind drives it away. As the wax melts the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merryful and joyful. Sing to God. Father of orphans, defender of widows, God in his holy habitation. God gives the solitary a home and brings forth prisoners to freedom, but the rebels shall live in dry places. O oh God, when you went forth before your people, when we marched through the wilderness, You sent a gracious rain, O God, upon your inheritance. You refreshed the land when it was weary. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. Ascribe power to God. His majesty is over Israel. His strength is in the skies. How wonderful is God in his holy places. The God of Israel giving strength and power to his people. Blessed be God. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he might exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, 
who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to God. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine. And I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that they, you have given them so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. So the other day, I ran across a meme on Facebook I saw at the height of pandemic. And it read like this. To those who wonder what the Feast of the Ascension is all about, it is about the day Jesus started working from home. You know, it was really big during that thing. And it still works today, I think. Um, it reminds us 
This past Thursday was Ascension Day, the day our Lord returns to heaven. But to those who may wonder what a feast is all about, it marks the day when Jesus, working from home, I just said that, didn't I? That shows you how well I prepared. No. The feast in the church is a word that we use to describe something Encyclopedia Britannica calls, and get ready for their definition, a festival. A holy day of remembrance. A time set aside for the commemorate or ritually celebrate events or seasons that give meaning and cohesiveness to the faith we profess. So Ascension Day, we are professing our belief in the return of Jesus to heaven. In the Episcopal Church, we have four categories of feasts. I don't know if you knew, some of you knew that. We have the principal feasts, and I think most people know those. Let's see if you can help me. Easter, Christmas, Pentecost, next Sunday, All Saints Day. What's another one? Epiphany. One everybody loves, Trinity Sunday. And rounding out that list is Thursday's Feast of the Ascension. The second category are the Feasts of the Lord. I think you all know the one, don't you? It's, it's what we come to gather. So it's the one Jesus instituted on the night before he died for us. It's the Eucharist. And we come together every week to celebrate the Eucharist. Other feasts that fall into this category are the naming of Jesus, his presentation, and his transfiguration. Third category is some people will argue about. It's called the major feasts, such as Ash Wednesday and Good Friday, and other days that have been set aside by the church to celebrate or remember significant events, times, people that have had a major influence in our lives as a church. Now, those who may come on Wednesday mornings, we celebrate some of those people. You'll hear St. Paul, St. Matthew, St. Luke. You'll hear the, the famous ones. You'll hear some other ones. This is the fourth category, though, and this is the one we hear most often on Wednesday mornings, and that's what we call the lesser feasts. Now, they're not lesser because they are of less importance, but they are lesser because they describe who have set an example or took action that had a more localized or regional impact. There are people you and I can more easily relate to because they're just like us. People doing everyday things to share the love God has for them, helping others to know that love too. Their stories, along with those recognized in the major feasts, are included in a book the National Church puts out called, it's now called, A Cloud of Witnesses. And with each new printing, the church recognizes the vastness of witnesses who have lived to serve the Lord. Now, there's only 365 days of the year, so you can understand why the names might change once in a while. Sometimes we get two or three on the same day that we recognize. Who knows? Maybe one day, one of you might be in that book. It's possible. In fact, in 2016, at our, the Episcopal Church's General Convention, we welcomed a gentleman from Nebraska who survived the internment camps during World War II into this cloud of witnesses, a recognized feast for his steadfastness in faith in the face of real prejudice. Like the disciples when, when Je whom Jesus tells to stay the course, in the, in the midst of uncertainty and fear, Hiram Kano trusted in the Lord. Resolute in his faith and filled with that same spirit that filled the disciples, he was able to help people see light in the midst of darkness. 
resolute in our faith, filled with that same spirit, we too can help people see light in the midst of darkness. One way is, is, is a way that many of you have already done and do almost all the time by simply sharing the ways in which we have seen the light ourselves. Another way is to simply let that light shine through us. We don't need any special words or actions to convince somebody that the love we know is of God. If we truly know it, if we truly embrace it, people will see it in the way we live. So how do we do this? We begin as the disciples did, by opening our hearts to what God, to the Lord's invitation to follow him. It's in these first steps that we take that we learn what following the Lord is like and about. It's listening to his teaching and seeing for ourselves the difference his love makes in the lives of those he encounters. It is through our knowing we are then able to take the next step towards believing, to trusting that what the Lord says is true and just. Believing, we find we no longer follow in awe of the Lord. Instead, we find ourselves in sight, invited to walk alongside the Lord not as a teacher, but as our friend who helps us to understand the potential we possess through the work we have been called to do. Strengthened, encouraged, empowered along the way, there comes a time in our journey when we, like the disciples, are sent forth to share what we have come to know. To help others see what we see. How many of you feel called to be an evangelist? Let me see some hands up there. Come on. One, two, three, four, five. Hey, there's a few. That's good. That can be a scary thought, can it? Who here looks forward to going out and, and, and sharing the good news of God found in scripture with those that they don't know. Hey, even I get shaky sometimes, okay? We need, to, in order to do this, we need some courage. We need some faith. Because, let's face it, we can't do this on our own. So where do we look to for help? Who knows that? God, of course. If we ask, actually, whatever we ask, God hears what we say we need. And when we ask for something in accordance with God's will, we will get what it is we need. Take Jesus, for example. He's about to leave this world to a group of misfits. Yeah, misfits, they were. A Bible study I, I was in in England, one of the people called it the dirty dozen. They just don't get it all the time. And he's about to leave the world to a group of people who he has entrusted with the truth about God's love. They know their weaknesses. They're hesitant. They're anxious about all this. They're not sure about the charge he is giving to them. They ask for help. Help to be faithful servants and worthy of the task before them. And Jesus tells them help is coming. He wasn't going to leave them alone. And this seems to settle their minds. But they're still anxious. And he tells them let go of their anxiety and trust in God. God. For God was going to send the Holy Spirit. The second spirit he told them about following the Last Supper 
and before going off to Gethsemane. A spirit who would strengthen and enable them and lead them to all truth. But before the spirit would come, he tells him he must leave. And according to John, John says Jesus did so from atop the Mount of Olives, across the Kidron Valley from the temple. But just before leaving, Jesus does something. He prays for and with his disciples that their hearts and minds would be open to what it was they were to receive. Next week is Pentecost. The church's feast to celebrate the outpouring of the Spirit on the disciples. And while what Scripture describes happened 2,000 years ago, the Lord continues to pour out His Spirit on His disciples today. And by the way, if you didn't know, that's us. Mm -hmm. As we prepare for the Feast of Feasts. Let us ready our hearts, ready our minds, so that next week we not only celebrate what we know once happened, but what we experience in our lives today. And how do we begin? Simply by saying, help me, Lord. Help me be the person you called me to be faithful in love and witness to the goodness you revealed in and through Jesus Christ. Goodness that opens wide the gate to the joy that awaits all who call upon your name. Amen. Continuing on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified, he has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are found on page 385 in your Book of Common Prayer. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Scott, our bishop, Tom, our priest, Terry, our postulant for the diaconate, in the Anglican cycle of prayer, 
We pray for thy kingdom come, the church, in the province of the West Indies. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, St. Luke's Plattsmouth, Reverend Mavis Hall, Deacon Ellen Olson, St. George's Oshkosh, Reverend Joan Phillips, our diocesan staff, and the work of the diocese, Bishop J. Scott Barker, Canon Elizabeth Easton, Brother James Dowd, Beth Byrne, Lakeisha Baskin, and in the DR, Holy Spirit, the Comforter Church, St. Michael Church. In the parish cycle of prayer, we pray for those who have graduated elementary school, Aylin M. Mackenzie C. For those who have graduated from high school, Ava A., Jacob A., Logan B., Sky C., Cameron C., Annabelle L. For those who have graduated college, Darius H., Sydney M., Lee M., Sydney T., and those with advanced degrees, Julie N. For this gathering and for all ministers and people, pray for the church. I ask your prayers for our president, Joe Biden, our governor, Jim Pillen, and for all elected and appointed officials of the communities in which we live and around the world. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor and the destitute, for the sick, the hungry, and those who struggle to survive, and for those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially Reverend Knudsen, Paul H., Marianne O., and those we name silently or aloud. Pray for those who have died. In our own congregation, I ask your prayers that God stays with and strengthens all those who are ill, especially Maureen, Ruth T., Tammy B., Robert Y., Gloria, Terry, Sandy, Scott H., Bill F., James L. Are there others? I ask your prayers to lift up those with special concerns, especially Susan H., Van and Jan A., Scott J., Sally R., Bobby R., Alberta Y., Bobby S., Janice M., Alex C., Trish A., Logan S., Fred and Joanne. Are there others? I ask your prayers and remembrances today for those who serve our country at home and abroad and for our veterans. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, you have blessed us with brave men and women who are willing to defend our freedom. May your protection and grace surround them each day. Let your healing hand be upon them who suffer wounds and injuries. May those who have made the ultimate sacrifice rest forever in your holy presence. Comfort the families who mourn and are left to remember the precious lives of their loved ones. Help us to honor and support them. Let us ever be mindful of each sacrifice made on behalf of the American people by our sons, daughters, husbands, wives, mothers, fathers, and friends. Amen. Watch over those in our community who travel, especially Brian C., Nancy B., Matt H., Jennifer W., Frank and Peggy Z., Silas C., Jan S. Are there others? Keep them safe as only you can. We ask that you continue to pour out your blessings on those who are celebrating birthdays this week, especially Brian W., Vivian N., Maggie H. Are there others? 
and those who are celebrating anniversaries, especially Chris and Chris G. Are there others? Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we have the repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Almighty God, whose will it is to hold both heaven and earth in the peace of your kingdom, give peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. All this we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God.
our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer A, found on page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We listen to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us an everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you've made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask to your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver them from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
Continuing on page 366 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory. Now and forever. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our announcements. For those of you who are watching online, following the announcements, um, we are going to do our recognition of our different uh, youth and uh, some of the faculty that have been working with them. So if you wish to leave us after that, you're more than welcome. Uh, I just want to let you know that announcements is going to go a little bit longer than normal. So a couple of things I would like to highlight in the bulletin. As you can see, it's full, and we didn't even get everything in there that needs to be there. Um, next weekend is a flag retirement ceremony. Uh, Troop 483 Eagle Project is taking place. If you have an American flag at home that has seen better days, uh, that you wish to see retired in a respectful and dignity, with dignity, please drop it by the office this week, all right? And we will get it to the scouts this next weekend, and they will do the appropriate measures to take care of that. Pentecost is next Sunday. Now the bishop won't be here. He skipped out on us again. Did you hear that, Bishop? <laughs> no, he had some other commitments, so he couldn't be with us on our feast day. But he will be here on June 18th. But still, even though he won't be here, I invite everyone to please wear something red next week, and we will carry on the tradition of taking a picture or two at each of the services of everybody who is here, of our parish family, and then we will highlight that in the next issue of The Flame. Wednesday worship, um, I am slipping it one more week. Uh, we will begin on the 20, or on the 31st instead of this week. Um, due to a schedule change at Aylin School, it's now her graduation from elementary school, so I'm gonna go to that instead of do service. And I hope and pray that the Lord forgives. All right. <laughs> Let's see. Parish cleanup also, we are changing the date on that. It was originally intended to be on the 3rd. Um, but since we wrote this, it's now going to be the 10th. So if you have some time on Saturday, June 10th, there's some things we'd like to get done before the bishop gets here. Uh, please visit with either Dean or Chris. Back behind me. Um, and let them know you can be here. We will have a sign-up. If it's not there, there will be a sign-up sheet in the, at the hub to let us know you're coming. Journey Youth, please take a look. We've got an escape room. We've got pilgrimage. Um, Camp Canterbury registration is open for those parents who want to see their kids go to diocesan camp. It's open from 4th through 12th grade. So if you have a child going into 4th grade, they get to go to camp. And Isaiah and Olivia, you guys have been almost every year you can, haven't you? Do you think it's been fun and worth going? Oh, they sound so excited, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is. Um, Curcio um, is coming up also. If you wish to know more about Curcio, please see Ruth. Um, there is no fee for those who wish to do Curcio. We are take, as a parish, we will take care of all of the fees. I'm looking for a new acolyte team minister. 
uh, if somebody would like to take on uh, working with our youth and any other adults who might be interested in being acolytes. And also, Corey doesn't know this yet unless he's read the announcements. No, I think I mentioned to him last week. We're gonna open up a des designated fund for the Santa Ana mission. Um, you heard me talk about it when I came back from the Dominican Republic. This is a mission that we worked at and we will be, the team will be working at again in November. It has no electricity, no running water, has pipes in the building that need some repair. So St. Mary's, Blair, is, and us are going to partner together to try to raise $2,500 to get all of that done. Um, it, it's a, it doesn't seem like a lot to us, but to the small community over there, it is a giant hurdle. Um, anything extra we raise, our goal is $1,500 of that. Anything extra we raise will go to support the Santa Ana mission, either with another project that they get approved through the diocese, or when our teams go down there, we will help, you know, if we have to buy paint or whatever, we'll be using the money only for the Santa Ana mission. Um, one announcement that did not make it into the bulletin because I just ran out is uh, VBS registration is now open. Uh, if you go to our website, right at the top of the homepage is a button for VBS. Click on that, it'll take you to the registration page. We are welcoming youth who are four to 11 years old. And I know Cindy's working a wonderful program. She could still use a few more volunteers. Um, if, if you have that, if you have some time, we're gonna be doing that June 24th? 25th through the 29th, 6 to 8 p.m. All right, so if you... So that's a good point. And so next month, because Sunday school ends today, uh, that frees up the classrooms for stuff. So they're going to begin their prep work beginning uh, in another week and a half or another two weeks. If you got some time, you want to bring your coffee up here and sit down and help cut prep, just they'd love it. Trust me, I know they would. Um, let's see, there was one other announcement. I cannot remember. It didn't make it in the bulletin, but I can't remember it. Let's see, birthdays and anniversaries. I know we have a birthday girl here. I know Miss Vivian's here. Brian is off with Jen on holiday. Uh, is Maggie watching? Do you know anybody? The house? No? Okay. Um, Miss Vivian, how old are you going to be? Six years old. Awesome. Awesome. We're going to say a prayer for you, okay? hand. There we go. Oh God, our times are in your hands. Look favor, we pray, on this your servant as she begins another year. Grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You have a very happy birthday, okay? You're welcome. I don't see the Gearhearts here. Are there any other anniversaries that didn't make it in the bulletin? Hearing none, it is now time. We are switching gears. Line, uh, if you wish to leave at this point, we're going to get into some recognition stuff. Uh, if you want to stay on, it's probably going to take about 15 minutes. So I'm going to let Cindy begin. Um, Terry, would you get her a microphone? Just in case anybody online is trying to listen. Now that for online, it's hard to hear. Um, we're going to let Cindy take care of the Sunday school and her Sunday school teachers a little bit, and then we'll do um, the, the we'll recognize the journeys mentors. We'll recognize our EFM mentor mentors, and then we will recognize the youth who are graduating and moving up with one special announcement. Thank you. Okay. Well, first of all, I want to recognize. I would recognize all our teachers, but Annika had a family meeting, a family emergency, I mean, and um, Jean, who's also a right-hand person, um, had a really bad headache today. So I'm giving them their presence other times, but all three of our teachers have been just terrific this year. Lisa, thank you for coming back and being a teacher again. We missed you. 
And they have all been good at leading our kids through uh, their spiritual life and making it fun while they do it. And I really, really appreciate them. Okay. We need, I'm going to call your name and come on up, okay? Amanda. And you can stand right here. You can stand up here, actually. There you go. <laughs> and Jackson. And these are all people who have shared our Sunday school at some point during this year. Some of them every week, some of them when they can. There you go, Jackson. You want to stand next to her? And Vivi. I have the shakes of this microphone keeps bouncing around. There you go. Can you stand up here with Amanda? There you go. And Aylin, our official old person. <laughs> Aylin has been fantastic. She's been with us since she was three years old, and she's so sweet, and she always helps. So, And then... Uh, Wesley and Beckham, my grandsons, are not here today. Their their aunt in uh, their aunt in Kansas couldn't say the word uh, is graduating, and Leland did not make it in today. But they were all great kids this year. We really enjoyed it. So, and tell everybody you know about VBS just in case they know a kid in that range. Vivi. Can you look at her camera? Oh. Thank you so much, guys. You can go back to mom and dad. <laughs> you too. Thank you. Of course, Cindy recognizes all of her staff, I have to recognize Cindy as well. Um, I don't have great gifts, I'm sorry. I, I know. You get me. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cindy has just tireless, tirelessly worked with our Sunday school program and put up with the crazy changes that come from the clergy and just the ideas that I, I come up with sometimes and she just rolls her eyes says, yes, Tom, and then she works her magic. Um, but she has done such a wonderful job, as has all of our Sunday school uh, teachers. I just wanted to give Cindy a round, please. Thank you. Thank you. Now, let's see. Journeys mentors. I know we have a couple of them here. Miss Michelle, come on down. Miss Pam, where'd she go? There she is. Let's see. I see Miss Lori is here. And uh, hmm, Miss Sharon, you've been helping in the kitchen, so please, okay, you're taking pictures. Um, Margie Crawford's been helping on and off, um, and she wasn't able to be here today. Uh, Kathy Boozer is also one of our uh, Journeys mentors, and she has been, uh, she was recognized last night and at her, the service she was at, um, and Marcia Adams. Um, I cannot speak enough nice things about her. Uh, she has been the one who has provided food every week for Journeys. And, and for those who may not understand the Journeys program, the meal starts the whole night. So if that doesn't go over good, we tend to get the leftovers <laughs> from the kids. Uh, but Marsha has always worked well with the kids, trying to get them what they will enjoy eating, what they will eat, because we've, over the years we've had some picky eaters. Uh, she has just been an amazing uh, part of our ministry. And for these three here, um, I don't know how we would do journeys without them. Uh, we're always looking for an extra mentor or two because there's times when they have to be somewhere else or they, have to, they could use somebody to fill in for them and take a break a little bit. If you might be interested in working with youth this year, coming up in the fall, Wednesday evenings, 6.30 p.m., uh, we get together for dinner, and then 7 to 8 is our classroom time, our small group time, and then uh, we finish with Compline and a snack. So um, I'd like to just offer a real short prayer of thanks 
for our uh, journey as mentors. Heavenly Father, we give thanks that you have strengthened these people to do the work they do, that you have given them patience, that you have given them wisdom, and that you have given them the courage they need to deal with the continuously changing lives of our youth. Bless the work they do, bless them, and we give thanks for your great glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. If I could have Cindy. Hold on. While Father Tom praises us, Father Tom is the heart and the backbone of Journeys. He guides us mentors. He is a mentor himself to our high school kids. He plans all of our outings. Um, he plans all of our special um, visitors, such as for suicide awareness. Um, we've had people come in and teach um, self-defense, things like Father Tom is everything to Journeys. Without him, I don't know if we would have Journeys. Um, so a round of applause to you, Father Tom. Cindy back out here. Cindy. Cindy. <laughs> Ruth, would you come forward, please? So when Cindy comes back out here, we'll, we'll... All right. Well, if she can hear us. She's coming? All right. Come on up, Ruth. Um, so we have another uh, formation program here at the church that it doesn't probably get the publicity it deserves, um, but it's, it's, it's an adult program that meets over four years. Um, and first year they study Old Testament, second year New Testament, third year theology, or is it church history? Church history, and the fourth year is theology. And Cindy and Ruth have taken that on and been leading it for about five or six years at least now, at least the two of you. Yeah, more than that. Um, yeah, so they have just uh, really taken that on. And we haven't had too many people from our own parish over the last couple of years because so many people had done it. But they also teach their course via Zoom. And I think, was it last year everybody was a Zoom? Or was it the year before? And you had people from across the country in that, didn't you? So Education for Ministry is a wonderful program. I went through it long before I became ordained. Um, taking the class, does that mean you have to become ordained? Okay. Uh, it, it, it doesn't always lead to that. Uh, but the Lord does have a weird sense of humor. Um, but if you would like to know a little bit more about this program, please talk to them. Um, they would love to have you join them next year. Uh, six to eight people is that perfect group size for them. Um, and I know that if we have people here who want to gather in person, they would find a way to make it in person and Zoom. Um, don't let the tuition scare you. We have some scholarship money, uh, but it is an excellent program, and these two people have done an awesome job. Give them a round, please. And I'm going to offer a short prayer for you if I can. Heavenly Father, we understand that Sometimes as adults, we think we know it all. And we are hesitant to open ourselves up to let people know that we really don't. 
We give thanks for programs like EFM where we can ask the questions that we struggle with in a place where we are surrounded by your love. And we just give thanks for Cindy and Ruth who have been your voice, your hands, your presence in that study. Continue to bless them, continue to guide them, and surround them with your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes. I know, but I brought you back up. <laughs> okay, let's see. Now, uh, we, got a, we got a couple of, so we got, would Miss Aileen and Miss McKinsey please come forward? Now, these two young ladies are graduating and going up to junior high. Being the world of people. Oh, please stand down here, the world of craziness. And both of them will be joining us next year in Journeys, because Journeys is open to 6th through 12th grade. Um, I'm excited about seeing both of you next year. Um, and uh, what, what junior high are you going to go to? Elkhorn Ridge Middle School. And do you know which one you're going to? St. Matthews. Okay, give them a round, please. I'm going to offer a little prayer for you too, okay? Heavenly Father, we just ask that you send your spirit of peace and well-being upon Mackenzie and Aileen and all those who will be graduating elementary and taking their step, next step in, towards adulthood. Lord, just be with them as they leave the place they've known for so long and enter a new world, a world with uncertainty, a world with chaos, but a world in which they can grow. One that they can learn more and more about not only how you have made this world so great, but how that we can do our part to keep it that way. All this we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You two can have a seat. Thank you. I don't have any high school graduates here that I know of. Are there any graduates that didn't? They're not on my list. No, I'm getting there. You're not a high school graduate, Amanda. You just, uh, you just finished kindergarten. <laughs> but one day we will say that. How about college? We have Darius and uh, is he, Sydney Marshburn has finished her advanced stuff, uh, her college. For those that don't know Sydney Marshburn, she was a young lady that was here many years ago and had a, she has a debilitating disease and she has finally finished college and she is ready to head out into the world, so God bless her. Darius is not here, but we will just recognize, we recognized all of them in our prayers. College, that was it. So we have someone completing an advanced degree. Miss Julie, would you come forward? Are there any others that have gotten masters or doctorates or anything like that this last year? So, some of you may know, but some of you may not. Julie never intended to leave at all. She was going to start a lawyer's practice because she just finished the bar this week. Give her a round. <laughs> and she was going to be our organist, and she was going to have her practice. And then she went and did something really silly. She joined the Navy. I know, I know. The Navy of all things. You're surrounded by Air Force here, just so you remember that. Now, they, an offer came up, and, and she couldn't pass it up. Uh, she's going to go work for the JAG, Navy JAG. And we are so excited for her. Uh, she will be with us up until the beginning of August. So please, make, remind her how much she is loved because you have been so wonderful and so much a blessing to us. And we are so thankful that you made it through the bar without losing all your hair. <laughs> oh, I'm going to offer a little prayer for you. Heavenly Father, we just give thanks for the ministry that you have given us in, in Julie and, and, and the grace, graciousness of her husband, Diego. Lord, we are just so thankful. And we are also thankful that she survived the bar exam and that she is going to become 
someone who works for justice and peace, someone who will strive to balance the world that we know here and the world that is in your purview. Lord, she has just been wonderful. And I know in my heart she will be a wonderful lawyer, even in the Navy. <laughs> Lord, we know that Jesus rode a boat, so we're okay with that. But Lord, most of all, we are just okay that you have given us time with her. And we ask that you watch over her as she prepares to make the next leg of her faith journey, serving you and serving her fellow man. All this we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Oh, let's see. I think I have gotten everybody. Have I forgotten anybody that you can think of, Sharon? All right. That being the case, our, did I forget somebody back there? Oh, you're done? Yes. <laughs> I would just get ready to announce, you want to announce the going forth? Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.